I don't know, man. He was looking pretty. Like I'm not gay or anything, but man, yeah, he was dude. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, like dude, I'm on that boat too, cool. Bro, dude, what you, dude, those crystal blue eyes. I was like, oh man, I was, I was melting a little bit, bro. Fuck it. Oh man. <laughs> You guys, if we do another Husbando list, he's like going to the very Hell he's yeah, bro. He's like, number one he's number already. One sure, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, God tier. Amazing. <laughs>
last couple episodes where it's like kind of yeah. slowing down. So this was really nice, even though it was like a one off, but really right, nice, right. um, very nice fight, and also introducing us to the the evil faction because we always got to have those. So yeah, and then fight was even nice. Though, even... uh, Mappa showing off their animation studio. Yeah, the music even in the background, I thought that was a really like really sick song too. Like when uh he was when Gojo was fighting the Mount Fuji. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just taking. I'm just stealing the MC's like little yeah. bit when he says like, "Oh, Mount Fuji." It looks like Mount Fuji. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I don't really know like much of what to say because it sounds like he's gonna have like his own little training arc now with Gojo. Yeah, the only thing I'm kind of worried about is power creep because, like, I mean, I, I know Gojo is he's the strongest. Even he's calling Volcano Head weak, even though Yuji was saying like. Like, this guy is, like, way stronger than anything we've seen before, and he was already struggling with a special grade. So, so I'm yeah. kind of worried about power creep, but hopefully they'll it'll slowly, like, they'll slowly develop it over time. I don't know. I'm kind of used I, to that. I like, that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, even if it is, like, because I know, like, uh, there's a few, like, was it, sh- like, sh- Shonen shows that I, have, I, have, I thought have done it well. Like, one of it, like, Bleach, when, I, when, when you first kind of get introduced to the Soul Society. And then, like, I mean, you basically, like, were, how weak Ichigo actually looked, where, I mean, Byakuya didn't even have to move, and he mm-hmm. just got knocked out. I think even same thing with Renji at the time. Uh, or maybe he str- struggled, I can't remember. Renji but then, you know, struggled he... the first time. And okay. He didn't really yeah. recover after that. <laughs> That's okay, right? Renji, Renji's just terrible. Hey, man. But, he uh, has fans, I... all right? Yeah. But anyway, like, so they can do it well. But I, it also like depends on like how much of like a boost he gets with his like the curse energy because it seems like it's definitely like a uh, something that's gonna bump up his like stats and just everything probably just crazy fast because it definitely seems like he's like at first like at the beginning you know, he seemed like he was hella strong and then you find out this basically the MC is pretty terrible compared to like everything else that's going on. Well, because mm. he's got to get like his powers from the, the other guy Sukuna. And, yeah. Um, Gojo was even he was even saying how um. His he can only he can only do close range combat, but like his techniques, he doesn't have any that he was born with. But he's just gotta take everything from like Sukuna. So, dude, Gojo's ability is pretty uh, OP as well. I don't know how you can beat that with the way that the describe it. The Infinity <laughs> Void, like what the <laughs> fuck is that? <laughs> like going back to what David said about like the power creep, I feel like him this episode goes like gives like a really good example of like the ceiling. Of what the show is, oh yeah, and like how far down this man is. Like, if by the end of like this twenty some episodes of the show is, this man fucking uh, Yuji catches up to this man, I would be so pissed. I'm like, dude, this should <laughs> not creep. be fucking happening. Okay, that, that, that's what yeah, you mean. if okay. that kind of power yeah, yeah. happens, I will legitimately be so mad. But I don't know. This show is so far. The show is good. I'm kind of thinking that like they're the the villains. There's all got combine their powers together to see a way. Gojo, and then, like, I don't know. Maybe, like, Yuji face off against one, like, the guy, the the other guy, the, the guy we've seen so far, the one with, like, the like the kimono or whatever, or the kata. I don't know. Okay, so do we have a current date of, like, what's happening? Because they said, like, oh, we're going to do our plan on October 31st, and it's like, okay, what's the current date? Yeah, I don't oh, remember. I don't know. Did they say anything? I can't, no. Okay. I want to say, like, I feel like we just started the school year. Like, so it started April, maybe May. I'm not sure. Yeah. Hmm. So it may be, well, like, anime yeah. or something. May, Did you have these people celebrate Halloween? Like, it's kind of weird how it's set on Halloween. They actually do. Uh, yeah, they it's, do. It's, it's, it, more, it's, not... it's not a traditional. It's, like, it wasn't popular back then, but it's getting more popular over the years. And now, so I think it was, like, 10 years ago is when Halloween started getting really popular. And now it's I don't a remember the Shibuya party. Yeah, it's a Shibuya party <laughs> where people start dressing up and in costume in Shibuya. Even though I don't really think Japanese people, like, they don't really dress like scary. It's more like cosplay still. But Right. That's fine. I don't think, I don't yeah. think they go trick-or-treating, though. I think they only know about the... the party and drinking. Party and drinking, <laughs> yeah. The costumes. So. Yeah, it's the fine. The, part. the main part, exactly. Um, <clears throat> God, what, what else was there? Uh, I don't think though that there's really gonna be any. Like, I, I kind of don't think there's gonna be any kind of power creep. The only way I can see is like any way like that is if basically if uh, MC goes berserk, if uh, the guy inside of him, you know, guy inside takes over him, like you know every shonen show has with basically Naruto, Bleach, and uh, I'm sure there's more. But I, I, I don't get... think so as of yet, just because the volcano guy was rated at eight or nine fingers, and then as of right now, the MC only has like three. So 
Yeah, oh, dude. Shit. Okay, like, yeah. I think it's me. Mount what? Fuji at eight or nine fingers, and this man Gojo is just slapping Easy. him aside. I'm like, yo, Easy. this guy is so fucking strong. It's yeah. actually insane. insane. Yeah, and Infinity too is just uh, it's just too intense. Like basically, where you get the closer you get to him, like the more time slows down. This seems uh, That's pretty so crazy. Broken, dude. Yeah. yeah. You I thought mean, Gara I'm... Stan was the ultimate defense? Nah, <laughs> ain't got shit on this. Yeah, like how do you how do you like fight against time, right? Against someone who can control time around like their vicinity? Like that's that's insane. I'm I feel saying... like once he opens up his domain or whatever, and you're stuck in it, unless you can overpower him, there's no way you're gonna win in that fight. I'm assuming it's like someone with another like um domain power, like basically break through space and time. That's how usually these things work in the anime. Uh, I mean, I suppose, but I just can't fathom what what that could be. Like, what kind of power would be needed to do that? Yeah. So like, or, or like dimension powers is like, cause it's like this weird translated word that they use for dimensions and void that I always forget. So mm. I'm assuming it's gonna be one of those. That'd be interesting, but I don't think I have really anything else. This is just kind of like a fight episode, and kind of like a little bit of kind of information drop of kind of like what's going on. Yeah, just just some eye candy, some plot devices. You yeah, know, just... basically just Gojo, just basically just traveling for I don't know how fast or wherever he was to basically grab the MC and then just bring it back. Mm-hmm. Ten <laughs> seconds, dude. Was it ten seconds? Yeah, yeah, like after they left, like the 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 little hideout, it was ten seconds that they warped over. I was like, Jesus, dude. Fast oh, I like how I like when he says like, "Oh, I warped here," and then the MC's like, "This guy's not gonna tell me what the fuck I just happened," <laughs> or he basically just kind of ruled it off like, "Like, yeah, that, whatever. I'll, I'll come back to it later." But anyway, that's that's all. I think that's all I have now. Right. Anybody? Yeah, no, I'm good. I, I don't have anything yeah. else. All right. Yeah. yeah. So that was a nice episode for Jujutsu Kaisen, and then and so that's it for Jujutsu Kaisen. Now I'm going on to Haikyuu, and leave this up to you guys again. Man. Oh man. So with this episode, it was kind of just a uh, like a minor backstory for the the captain that popped on. So as I mentioned earlier. Um, I don't know if he was really like their their ace, but he's just one of the guys that helps control the flow of the game. Kind of like what they were mentioning, you know, when they're in the lead, they start slacking off, or they make mistakes, or they get nervous. This is the guy that puts everyone in check, you know. So he's not strong per se, but his his presence on the field, it's what puts everyone to that next level. So. It's like it's like he does everything consistent. Like he doesn't excel at everything at anything, but he basically right. he's just consistent, right? Which, basically, uh... foundations like his foundations is just perfect so i like how with this guy too like we <laughs> like he just shows up and we're getting backstory with him and yet we've been like following the rest of this team for i don't know how long and right. i think we still have yet to get any backstory with really any of them yeah yeah that's true so i thought that was kind of weird but uh brian your thoughts the animation is better compared to the last episode that was about as much as i got <laughs> okay but <laughs> yeah. but but was this but like with like the story and everything was it better than just like going over uh, nakuma uh, uh, I'll take Nekuma again, dude. Okay, good man, I, good man. I this character is just boring. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> I have really good like game sense. I'm not like amazing athlete. I'm not outstanding. Just re- freak reactions. Just, I have really good foundation game sense, and that's what carries me through everything. Like they'll put me in for like two or three plays to analyze everything better, and like tell my teammates to stop fucking around, and that's about it. Okay. Like this guy is just gonna be on the bench for like the rest of the time, just monologuing in his head <laughs> and telling people what are you guys doing and just giving up to them straight. That's literally all he's doing. Taylor, your thoughts. I had absolutely no thoughts about this episode. I thought it was so <laughs> boring. I feel like I feel like I mean like honestly I, I like I just feel like I was telling certain this while we were watching, but this show is just missing something. Like, I don't know if they, I don't know. It just feels very rinse and repeat to me. Um, mm. And I don't, I don't know how they should fix it or where they should go from there. Like sports themed, anything is not something I'm super familiar with. And so I don't know what you do to keep something like that fresh because I keep saying, Oh, I'm sick of these all these new characters. Like I care about the old characters and I just want to go back to them and their dynamic. Um, and then I'll say, Well, I'm sick of the volleyball because I'm sick of hearing the formation changes or the rotation switches explained to me like for the fifth time in the whole show. Again, like I don't need to hear that. 
if I know it, everybody knows it. And then, of course, there's like the long conversations between everything. Like there will be one point scored and then like 10 minutes of, of dialogue where everybody acts shocked that somebody blocked something or somebody made a score. I just it just feels really forced to me. And uh, that's my monologue. <laughs> the one cool block I actually thought was one, it was Kageyama and it wasn't uh, Sukishima. That was a part of it. I thought, th- I thought that part was cool. Um, like the, like the one of the, like the four points that they showed. The one thing mm-hmm. I really hate though is like they're in the third set and they're mm-hmm. still getting like they're basically they're still getting debated by this guy's like faint faint shots. Like nothing yeah. has changed. They basically say, "Oh, it's gonna go out. It's gonna go out," and then it goes in. I'm like, bro, you're in the third set. Like, where is it? Ba- where is it that you're actually like getting like used to these shots? Or you're you're um adapting to them or or anything? And they're it's just like they're still just like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. I'm like, you guys are in the third set. You see this fucking shot how many times now? Um, that's just kind of like a, a sports mindset. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, to the defense of the show, uh, Nishinoya is still having issues. It looks like he's and we're in the third set, too. right? Yeah. But like, like I said, I don't know what they're doing with his character because he went from a very dependable defender to a guy who's having like an identity crisis. He's I guess he's just freaked out now. All of a sudden, right? He's freaking out. He's not able to react to how he usually does. I mean, you bring it back to season three to the like all the points where he's able to like do these impossible like maneuvers to save the ball. Like I, I don't see how they backtracked him to point like this right now where he yeah. can't even do a simple receive. So because um, Nishinoya was so sick in the third in the third season because like when the first yeah. shot went flying past him, he's like he's like just and he just says give me three shots and you're just yeah. like oh shit and there's none of that and then mm-hmm. when I mean, like was it the third shot he like drills it or he basically like nails the block mm-hmm. this he's just like just a weeping bitch. <laughs> And I'm just like, come yeah. on, man! Like, why, why are you like, do like, you're going the wrong way with these characters? Because like, the whole thing with like Tanaka, like, basically, like, I, I don't remember like really going over much of his backstory. But then all of a sudden, you basically like, he's just pumping himself up in a sense. Like, he just got himself out of his root. Yeah. And then Nishinoya is just kind of like having to deal with one of these things. Like, oh man, I'm scared. I'm like, think, dude, you, like, we've kind of gone over this before. So right. like how Taylor said, like, they're just kind of rehashing things in a sense. Same mm-hmm. thing with the, like the rotation. Like we've learned the rotation on how many. Like definitely, like at least in a couple times in the first season, uh, where we didn't have to see that again. And it was just crazy. It was just crazy amount of talk for like again like four. It was just like a, which I, I I get it because it was a, like a lore dump, but at this uh, or in a sense just with like the, the new characters. But you didn't have to give us like information on like basically how to play volleyball, which we've already done that before, or they've already done it before. Yeah, and then, like, I've watched a lot of sports animes, and this is kind of weird. Like, to be in season four and still try to explain basic, like, terminology or basic knowledge for volleyball players, yeah. it's it's kind of weird. Um, and basically, with how they're pacing the story, how they're telling the story, and with all the uh, terminology done, I really feel like they're just, like, they're on a budget. Like, they basically have no budget, so they have to extend oh, it yeah, as long true. as they can. Because if you really think about it, they're using a lot of the scenes over and over and over again. Um, yeah. And they're not really showing a lot of action. And if you want to give someone backstory, um, I, I think they're doing it in a bad way. Like, if you're going to try to showcase the, the main team and the enemy team's backstories, you kind of have to give it a whole season, like in season three, where mm-hmm. you had, like, the whole 12 episodes to flesh it yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's where that's where this, uh, this season is... Uh, like having issues with and again the only thing I can think of is budget issues right with COVID happening the way it is and like with uh, I guess the time frame they had which is really weird because this is the they took a break so this is part yep. two of season four so I'm not really getting what the issue is but um, I'm, I'm not having much hopes with like the ending of the show and then I seriously doubt there's going to be season five like if there is a season five I would be like, years from really now. surprised That's like so it's sad yeah it's not going to happen like this it deserves so much more and they're just getting shitted on so i'm not to, sure what's going on to be fair um the second half of the like the second half of this season i think like uh and brian and i'm sure like uh many of us have mentioned as well like the, the animation has improved uh there's still a lot of parts though where the animation has definitely not improved like i like i can't stand when they like in the third seat like the third season i believe and i think maybe even like half of this i think mainly like the third season when they would all rush the car the rush the court like uh-huh. that animation was so well done, and now yeah. it's just it's just it just looks jagged and it's just painful to watch. Where I'm thinking, oh god, don't show us this again. Where 
it's just I don't know because like, that was like one of the best moments. Like that was like one of the, like the hype moments. Like every time they would right. just go like on the offense, and now it just looks so fucking bad. <laughs> Dude, they went from showing like all six of the teams to like maybe three. <laughs> like, so like they three even teams. they even had to cut out oh. the amount of characters they're doing when they were doing the synchronized. Yeah. I'm just like. Well, like, and then, I, and then when they show, when they actually show that, like, that where they're like hitting the ball, they show like maybe like a third of their body, where it's just like a little bit of their face, like in their arm now. Yeah. When before they would basically like show like every, like basically like they're like everybody's like entire body's like you know fainting, or uh, and then basically going up to hit the ball, and mm-hmm. now it's like they're showing just less and less of like of like the people, and it's just where it's I, I mean, I, I, I guess like they could do it just because like we know what's happening. But it just certain certain flashes would just look nice just to have that animation again, like if you yeah, if you're choosing right. to use that. Yeah, but like you mentioned though, like in the earlier seasons, if like say for instance Hinata was doing his decoy, you would see him animated like run all over the there. net, yep. go from like left to right or right to left. Here it's it just so good. They're it just looks showing so good him too. jumping. Yeah. Yep. So here they're just showing him like the, the end result, right? Just him jumping and hitting it, and then they're not even showing casing or like animating like the full. Like uh, animation of the ball from from the point of it being hit and that's like true. like landing on the court. It's just yeah. like like start to finish. That's it. So yeah, just I don't know. The only thing I can think of is they're having budget issues and they're just trying to rush it out. I, I think they they basically gave up on this show for anime qualities and uh, just the the show's quality in a sense. Yeah. So um, we'll yeah, see dude. if the budget is all dropped in like the last episode or something this season, like in if, an epic point. If they it's save everything, tough. if they say everything for for Nekoma's battle, right? Then, then, then maybe, maybe it'd be worth dude, off, right? We ain't getting Nekoma this season, dude. <laughs> I think this is gonna be. The, I think we're we're only getting this game, and then we're gonna get like basically like the setup for Nekoma, and I think it's gonna be cut off. I don't think we're getting Nekoma. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe how many episodes do we have left? We have five episodes left. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Holy shit! Yeah. Oh know, my god. Yep. Um. <laughs> Last week I said some stuff that didn't follow through. I'll say you said five? Five episodes left. Listen, they should not make this <laughs> last set go more than two episodes. I think they're going to. The only reason why I think is because like with Nishinoya showing like his he's having issues and stuff, the only like saving grace in a sense is that the, it's gonna have it's gonna have more Nishinoya backstory, which I'm fine with. I actually w- would not mind hearing more about this guy. And I just assume like it seems like with everybody else, like when they have like those that backstory episode, there's some like epic point that like where they end up getting like back into the game or something like you know Tanaka, uh, Skishima, um, like where they've had they've had like that epic moment where like like the animation was really well done. I'm just assuming that Nishinoya is going to have that moment, um, and I'm I would I would guess it would have to be next episode because I don't think they're going to have Nishinoya just like you know flopping all around with uh, where he's just freaking out for like another episode before they go to the backstory. So well, they're, they're, they're going to win. It, I don't think so. If if, if, if they win, win yeah. yeah, they can't yeah. have them. Yeah, I keep forgetting that we don't know if it, like because he they could still lose. I guess because because <laughs> I forgot that it is kind of reaching that point of the season where it's just like it could be done. <laughs> so, oh, Taylor, your man. thoughts? Uh, yeah, sure. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do I we? We're just we all straws here. Yeah. I think. Do we all yeah. think Crossing is going to win? I mean, I would imagine so, just because they're already setting that up for the amazing battle, like dumpster battle, right against right. Nekoma. So I, okay. I'm sure it's, I'm sure they're going to win this one, which is kind of stupid because you kind of know what the results are going to be. It's just how are you going to get there? You know, like right. the journey. So I don't know. I us. right. I I really don't think uh, they're going to showcase that. I think this this part two of season four. I think it's going to be all like all dedicated to this match. And then they're they're gonna tease the Nekoma uh, fight, and then and then we'll okay. see what happens there. You you don't and think I, they're you don't think they're just gonna blue ball us? You don't think they're gonna knock Cross Snow out and then have this team move on to face Nekoma? No, because there's so much uh, that they have to go through, right? If if they would have won this set, then it would have made sense for them to fight against Nekoma. But it's 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 set three. It's the final set. You know, like Harasuno's still having issues, uh, so they have to do maybe like one or two backstories mm-hmm. uh, to kind of get them to get that power. Uh, the power up that they need to beat this team, and then they just threw down their the other team just threw out their captain. So, uh, and then this is the guy that's gonna like make sure everyone on his team is gonna like uh, like play their best. So I seriously doubt that they're just gonna fold over now unless something amazing happens. And again, that's gonna take time from Karasuna to build up. All right. Okay. Five episodes. I don't think it's gonna happen. I think it's gonna take at least three or four episodes for them to finish this match. And then on the last episode, it's gonna be the uh, like the setup. 
yeah, the setup for the next match or season or movie or whatever. Gotcha. Three to four, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> I know, yeah. right? Yeah, because if you think about it, like there's no way in hell, right? There's no, there's way, no in way hell they're gonna no. like like overcome them in, in two in two episodes. And there's I, no I, way there's no way you know like if Crosstown's moving on, they're, they're not gonna make like a two episode like Nekomon arc. Right. That, shit, that shit's gonna be like a season of its of itself, I'm sure. Right. And I'm okay Which, with that. Yeah. I, I'd be yeah, okay don't get me wrong. Like yeah. for what is this? Season yeah, four? Yeah, the, the match that they're in, they're probably gonna do this like match by match. You just have a whole season just for the match. Yeah, like I mean, if it's but, Nekoma, hell yeah. I don't know, oh, man. Like, too, I guess yeah. I don't know. Well, to be fair though, they, they did have Nekoma in this one too. They 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 used two episodes for it, which which again we're all fine with. Uh, you guys are fine with it. Oh, oh my bad, my bad. Like, this show <laughs> isn't about Nekoma, it's about Karasuno, all right? It's about the new little giant, all right? Right, 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 right. Gotcha. But, um, I mean, it's, it's it's whatever. David, do you think that uh, that um, Karasuno is gonna win this? Would yes. you would you guess what you do think? Okay, yeah. and then Brian, Kars- dude, if Karasuno do not win. <laughs> I will yeah. legit never watch this show ever again. <laughs> God, wow. like not even lying, I will completely right. give up on the show. Plot went somewhere out the fucking window halfway through production. I was like, dude, I'm fucking done. You're getting a one for the season. I'm oh gonna over God. it, dude. I oh, was Jesus. just legit rewatched fucking the Shira Torizawa fucking arc <laughs> over and over and over, and just keep that in my mind forever, dude. Uh, Taylor, oh God, um. Okay. I don't know. I, but, she huh? is not. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how it ends. Like this. no, no. Like, are, are you going to read the manga if it uh, ends up um, being really bad? I think I'm just going to read it regardless. Yeah, I think I'm going to read it regardless because I'm not going to oh, drop IQ. I just think that the the anime has just seen its time. Mm. But as I mean, for like, what was the question? Who is going to win at the end? Do you or think, who do we do want to win at the end? Who do you think? Do you think Krasno is going to win this round and face Nakama? Or do you think the, they're gonna lose? I think yes, they're gonna win this round. Why wouldn't they win okay. this round? I, I don't know because the the That's season the season <laughs> perfectly you... ends at that time too. Anime only ending, dude. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! Let's oh, go down that round, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. The the one thing though that um, God, what was it? It's uh, that it's like uh, it's. Like, would you would you still watch it though? Like, let's say if it returned back to like the previous team, like let's say if they all said like, oh, you know, good news, like it's the same studio, but it's like actually like, the original team that did the first three seasons. I mean, I'd watch it regardless because I'm a sucker for sports animes, but okay. uh, and also I'm dedicated this much time into it already. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd watch it regardless, anyways. Gotcha. But, like, would it be cool if they went back to the old anime? Hell, fucking yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> yeah. That that would be really cool. So hopefully, maybe that 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 dream can still be alive for one day. Anyway, yeah, we're we're over fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah. So, so. keep jeeping, Shren. <laughs> <laughs> I will, man. I will. A, Fly high, Shren. They need Fly a win for for Brian's sake for his for his for sanity. Please. Yep. Yeah, that's that's that is true. All right, so we're right wrapping up there for high Q. Um, we're on to Higarashi. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh. Yeah, so it looks like the uh, the the doctor or not the doctor, the nurse and the photographer. Um, I, I think it's their destiny to <laughs> go missing, basically or get kidnapped. every every route. Yeah, yeah, and then there was a big lore dump as to like why the disappearing uh, uh-huh. is is happening or why they're getting kidnapped, why not? So I thought it was really interesting. So uh, with everything that they're giving you, like I'm pretty sure, like Keiichi has to run the perfect route for him not to die. Because I feel like with every route that he takes, he makes like a small mistake, and that causes him to get like cursed or demon or spirited away or whatever. I guess. Um, so I'm kind of curious as to like what he has to do to survive this this night or this festival to not get killed or whatever. Honestly, the biggest thing is this episode is what the fuck, Rika? <laughs> that was freaky as hell. Oh my <laughs> I know God. that freaked me out too. I was not expecting that. Was like that, that was like. <laughs> Her voice actress, like she dropped like, the cutesy act, went straight to her full uh-huh. like real thirty year old voice, <laughs> just for that moment. Yeah. I really, I really liked the animation for her eyes too. I thought it oh, kind of reminded so me of like twenty eight days of later or twenty eight days later for a second. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, they're not Gojo's eyes, but, you know, it ain't blue either, so maybe that's why. Maybe red is just evil, and it creeps us out, but, yeah, that she was super creepy. So, like, it's so like you're saying, too, how he has to do, KJ has to do everything perfect. It's like, like, uh, Rico didn't even do anything this route to warn, like, KJ, but unlike the, the Rena route, where he told KJ mm -hmm. to, like, believe, to believe in Rena. No, I feel like... I feel like Rika is like making him choose the the wrong path, like on purpose. Because in arc yeah. one, yeah, he, uh, he he she told him to believe in your friends, right? And he still got let, him killed. Let Rena yeah. come back. No, and that got him killed. And then with this one, I think what caused it was the fact that she gave, like, she told uh, Kichi to give Mion the doll, and that doll is oh, yeah. what kind of started like the path with Mion and Shion, right? So I feel like whatever this girl says to you, do not listen to her. Just go in the like, opposite route, you know? I feel like that's the way to win. Because like, then even when she came up to him, she said, you know, like, it doesn't matter what you do at this point. This world is over. Like, your life is over. Yeah, like, like GG, you know? She was, like, she was blaming him for the situation. But it's like, you, you could have right. done something. And you basically laid the blame on, on Keiichi. Like, like, I don't know. So. Ah, <sighs> shit's rough, dude. But... Um... Yeah. yeah, I thought I thought the lore was interesting, and um, yeah, I really don't know what's going on. I can't comment too much on what's going on with Rika because I have a little bit better of an idea of what that might be, so I can't comment on that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. But it does seem like for some, like, like the like the continuation between routes is so much, or between each arc is so, so much more there than it was before. Like, it almost feels like there's. Well, kind of like what you guys were saying, like there's some sort of test, like there's some way that he is supposed to go. I don't know. I'm not mm -hmm. explaining myself very well. It's just very different than what I'm used to. And I'm just curious to see what she, what her, what her goal is. So um, as far as the story being told, is it kind of a, like kind of the same as the original or are they kind of like being, is the story being told in a different way than uh, the original? So... I don't remember this bit with um, everything that happened with them entering Rika's, like, for lack of a better word, shed, whatever that, whatever that building was. It's called a was. storehouse, but it's basically like, yeah, A shed. storehouse. Um, yeah, I don't remember that happening. I mean, it does happen. I don't remember it being in Mion's arc, so that kind of took me aback, but I, I could have been wrong on that. And then everything that Rika's been talking about, that her entire conversation with him like that was completely new. So yes, that's different. It, it looked new, like the whole, like, just based on yeah. like on what we knew about like how she like what whatever happened in like the first arc, whatever. Like it's it looked like it was new. Like everything yeah. basically, basically yep. it was like everything that Rika does is new. So that's what I'm assuming. And I really don't remember the the doctor being like so psychotic. The 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 first the go through. It was weird. It was weird. All this time, like they yeah. they disappeared like right away. Whereas the first route, like mm -hmm. it took them a day. Like the detective, yeah. like was right on KG, like because he, he, like he was watching him right away, and he went up to KG right away, and then, yeah, and then like everyone was asking like where those two were. So, and it happened really fast this time. Well, instead of being just two of them, those are actually four people involved. And then Keiichi did kind of fuck yeah. up by turning on the lights, maybe. I guess even though even though Shidon was the one that like like accidentally like broke the statue. Well, I don't think that really mattered, but uh, just the fact that as like for them standing out, like there was more people involved this time, so maybe that's why they drew more attention to themselves. And then I noticed too how they mentioned how like there's instead of like like religious stuff in the shed, there's a lot of construction tools, so. Like, right, I mean, construction. Like, yeah, so I'm assuming there's a lot of connection mm. between like the protests and like, and like her family. I don't know if like if she the Sonozaki family being Yakuza has anything to do with like the story. But we'll see. Um, uh, I mean, it's possible, but again, they're not really construction tools. They're more like cooking tools or like <laughs> well, killing I mean, tools. Oh no, that's 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 for her dance, the ritual dance of, like for when Rika's doing dance. I think they're talking about like the other yeah. stuff in the storehouse. There's other stuff that was like construction tools. Oh, uh, I mean, I know they mentioned that the first time, but didn't the nurse or Sonozaki kind of like correct it yeah. and saying they're yeah. not construction tools. They're like the hunting tools or cooking oh, tools. Okay. Yeah. Yep. For eat, for killing and eating people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> also, so, oh, that's pretty crazy. Just mentioned, like the fucking subtitles, man. Like, like they say, like they said ritual hole, like as in the tool, but it said next to Rika's name, uh -huh. so it said ritual hole Rika use, 
<laughs> I was like, wait, what is this sentence? I was like, God damn it. People trying to be funny, I guess. I don't just, know. Just punctuations, people. <laughs> so. so at this point in time, what are your guys' thoughts on like the demons? Do you think that the demons are real or do you think this is just lore or where it sounds like it's like demons? Radar? Like it's it's either mm. demons or it's like it's like some sort of like bacteria or like some disease. That's usually that's how these things usually go. It's like one of the two. It seems like mm-hmm. it's pointing to demons. So I'm not, even though like I guess we haven't like like we haven't really seen much like of like of, like demons. It's just more people going crazy, I guess. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I haven't really got much of the supernatural feel. It's just more I guess more horror. But like yeah, I haven't really felt. It hasn't really felt supernatural. It's just like it's just people going crazy. So you never know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I can get that. I mean, I think the only person who would be somewhat related to the demons, wouldn't it be like Rika and her family in a sense? I'm assuming like, yeah, because she's like the shrine maiden of like their like town, right. like, local, the local Shinto brand, like religion, whatever. And the story. And I'll kind of, and I'll kind of explain why she has this power or this, yeah. uh, or the like the split personality or whatever. So I don't know. I, I think we'd have to wait for her arc to pop up for us to kind of figure out more about the the supernatural stuff or the the, the demon side of the village. Mm-hmm. Um, are you are you still standing, uh, Shion? Cool. Sipping. Hell yeah! Are you serious? <laughs> Even after her phone call at the end. Yeah, yeah. Because we don't know what Mion's been doing, right? God. So we'll, we'll see. Be we'll me see. on the other side, on the other side of the phone, like trying to catch Keiichi in a lie. Maybe, or maybe me on caught she on, and she and she killed her, and she didn't know who was on the other side of the phone. You know. Yeah, could have been that too. I thought for sure something like that was going to happen there, but yeah. that's okay. I still thought it was creepy nonetheless. Like I don't know, it's just uh, something she, about like the way she was talking about she's it. She's so and, suspicious. Oh, she's just, like I, yeah, she's <laughs> suspicious, but like it's getting to the point where like, it feels like a, like a false, like a red herring. What's like. She's probably gonna get killed by mm-hmm. Mion. That's kind of why I feel it's gonna happen. Like, exactly, there's bro. She's on. It. But she's still suspicious. So like, I I don't like to have about her. Like, there's, like, she's hide. She's like hiding something else. Like, well, it makes more sense now that her family is a Kuza. So maybe mm-hmm. I guess. she needs to have that mysterious side to her. You know, because if like like I said, how are you gonna be like the the like they're twins, right? And how are you gonna be like one of the only few children in this village? And you've never been to school, and none of the other kids know about you. Like, I think that's kind of yeah. like suspicious, yeah, suspicious. in itself. So it's but like, since her family is Yakuza, they can kind of get away with whatever they I want. I don't buy that. So, no. she, I think she knows more about like the curse and stuff that she's not, and she's not telling the full story. And whatever, there's something about, like like Neon and like her backstory that like she doesn't want to tell. Right. So it's like everything's so suspicious. So like even if she's not, I, I think she's still gotta get killed by Neon. I just she's still a suspicious character, so I just can't trust her fully. Uh, well, judging from the the uh, the tone that we're getting from Rika, uh, I'm pretty sure Shion and 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 Keiichi are gonna die this arc just because. I mean, it sounds like so. it sounds like Keiichi's just he's just gotta die every route. Like if because it sounds like the first the first route like with the flashback. He didn't die the first route though. The, the dream like he was supposed to kill like Reina and I think she, uh, Neon before right. Rika intervened. So it sounds like he's just gotta die every time like from in this in this new in new series i uh, don't know no, yeah. again he did he didn't know, die the first be. arc he survived oh yeah he did survive yeah oh yeah that's true yeah. i can't even remember if he lives or dies it's not really like from from before it wasn't really important right um it was more just like it was really more just learning the information during each route and then a bunch of people die at the end and it's not always like the same pattern. It's not always just like girl to girl. He doesn't die at the end of everyone, from what I remember. It's kind of random who dies. Not random, but. Um... Oh, okay. So, is there ever like a happy ending at one of these arcs, or not really? Um. Well, yeah. I can't really say too much without giving too much away. You know what I mean? Like. Right. Right. I'll just. I'll say that like. <laughs> Because after, like, after Reina and Mion, it seems like those are the two most important people. I guess we still have Satoko, and I guess Rika, I guess. I guess, I guess maybe, so I'm assuming after Mion be, like, Satoko next, even though we, we, we didn't really get much of her in the story. And then Rika, sounds like she's super important. She could be, the, like, that's the fourth, the fourth arc. 
I guess, but then after Rika, it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know who else you would focus on, it, unless you do Keiichi himself. Like, I mean, yeah. you, I feel like you would have to, like, you do, like his Rika, survival arc. Rika and Keiichi, yeah. So it's just, I'm just thinking about, like, the main cast, like, the kids in the school. Mm-hmm. It sounds like, right. like, Rena and Shion were the most important, so. No, I, yeah, I'd say, thinking, uh, yeah. I'd say Rika was probably the most important, just because of her I guess, abilities. I guess, yeah. I guess, like, in terms of, I'm talking, I guess, for me, I just said, I just meant, like, important in terms of relationship, relationship to Keiichi, like, like Reyna oh. and Mion is like the most important people to him, so. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about, thinking ahead uh, to the next arc. Fuck, dude. We gotta wait till next week though to figure out the conclusion to this arc. Oh before my god. I can't. Well, I'm, before I guess Shion dies. And I hope she's okay. Well, next week or the week after. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean this is episode so, four, episode right? Four, and then the last arc only had four episodes. I think yeah, I think going, I think they're going four episodes per arc, so I'm assuming yeah. it's gonna be last of it. Yeah, could be. Yeah, I suppose. All right, well, I'm gonna continue simping and hope for the best. <laughs> Hopefully, you see she on survives. <laughs> but I yeah, mean, I don't have like... anything else for this week. It was a good episode. I liked it a lot. Oh yeah. Like you know, honestly, I think this is probably my favorite show of the season, just because of how everything's been presented to you. And yeah. then maybe it's because it's my first time seeing it, but I don't know how it rates on on your guys' list for this season. It's, I'm I'm kind of harsh just because like it's a remake, so I kind of feel like I kind of feel like um like it's it already has like the legacy coming behind it, so like so it is really good, but I'm saying like it's still like a remake of something that's been done, so mm-hmm. yeah. So I mean, it if it. It's still high, highly rated. Like it probably is the heavy number one in the season for me too, but like it's just hard. It's hard just because it's a remake. Like, yeah, okay. it's number one for me this season too. But honestly, Jujutsu Kaisen is really close on the heels. I think for me because Jujutsu Kaisen is new. Um, so mm-hmm. I mean, I love I love Higurashi, but there's just a lot of things that aren't. You know, it's not my first time going through it. So um, I'm kind of just going through like a lot of this is stuff I already know. But the parts that I don't know or that are new are very exciting. Um, so yeah, it's it's still number one for me. I feel like despite how like unattractive the show looks in general, like I mean it doesn't look like anything special. It's just <laughs> such a solid show. No, it looks um, like trash, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I don't know, it's just it's just it's just nostalgic for me. It's just the mid two thousands era style. Yeah. Right, right, so. I guess, but still. I I don't know why I gave the show a chance. I think it was probably because there was nothing else to watch, I guess. But yeah, the animation, <laughs> if Wait, if you, you guys weren't watching it. Oh, you didn't know I didn't, you know about the show before? Like the, the No, show? I just Yeah, I gave it a shot because basically you guys were mentioning you're gonna watch it and then like I was just watching whatever looked interesting. Oh, I, so I, then I think I went from like twelve or thirteen up uh thir- twelve or thirteen shows and I dropped it down to like seven or six. So had you heard of Higurashi before this season? Like, did you know it existed at all? Or I've I've heard of When Cicadas Cry because my younger brother. I think he's seen mm-hmm. uh, both of them, like the originals. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought the name was stupid, so I never really cared much for it at the time. <laughs> it is like, a stupid it, name, right? So I was like, When the Cicadas Cry, like I don't, I still don't even understand like what's the point like of that title, like what it what it signifies. But I guess Poetic, we'll figure out man. later on. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just for Japanese <laughs> Higurashi, I, I guess, but. Uh, yeah, no, I've never heard of it. Never seen like I've never seen it before, but I have heard of it. Uh-huh. But as for like memes or like information about the show, I've never seen clips or anything like that. Uh-huh. So this is all very new to me. Okay. All right. Huh? Yeah. So I guess that's gonna be it for Higurashi. So gotta wait for next week for the conclusion. Um, and then next we're gonna move on to Damachi. Oh, oh my favorite this show is, of the season. This is also no, like contender for number one spot for me dude oh, this show is so good this season uh like, oh go ahead go ahead uh, brian you're watching right i am and like you don't so you, you don't think the show is like do you th- like how how good do you think the show is especially compared to second like the second season uh i give it like a solid eight or nine mm, okay. Hmm. okay sorry cool you can kind of continue no, just the like the tension with this the season, this whole season. I like the fact that they're actually like writing out all the details, and there's not they're not leaving out much or anything at all, right? It's it's one plot, it's one arc, and there's so much tension going on. There's there's consequences. There's character development. You know, like I think I think so far for Donamachi standard, like everything has been perfect. I I have I don't really have any faults yeah. with this show. 
and then like with the way that the show ended like shit is about to go down right yeah. with with the way bell like everyone was calling him a fool but it's just basically like a kid who doesn't know any better and he just wants to like stand his ground as to he wants to be the hero this guy <laughs> just wants to be a hero he wants to protect everyone it doesn't matter if they're the monsters are humans you know um yeah, like with the way to end of this episode, like I can't wait to see what happens next next week. Yeah, I mean, uh, basically like that. Yeah, I like the, again. I like the development of like the way the series has gone, where like it, it feels like there are su- like uh, super high stakes. They're, like everything's high tension, a lot of consequences, and so I'm assuming like he's gonna have to fight like Ains in the next episode, just like the opening, and like mm-hmm. and also basically like. You know, we've, we're finally seeing like a shonen show where like, the naive main character has to actually like stop being naive and has to make a difficult choice. So. The, the one, uh, like everything about the show, I think is just so good. But the one weakness I've, I've thought that this show has always had so far for like the three seasons, it's just had weak villains. And I still think this villain's <laughs> kind of fairly weak. It, like, just kind of just like the whole story where it basically just sounds like, oh, like this blood drives me insane. But I found out this thing is if I basically torture monsters that talk. Like this, the voices go away. I'm thinking, dude, that's so fucking. That's just that's just dumb. Like that, that I could not get behind. But at the same time, though, this season doesn't need like a villain because it's basically like, I mean, no, it's, it's basically like the people. It's like the people versus like the actual like. It's it's like, oh god, it's it's like hard. It's like basically, yeah. fuck. I'm having like a tra- difficult time actually explaining but, it. But they well, don't need the villain because like no, the people like basically that, the that color is a good point. Like the villain is like yeah. I mean, the villains a bit uh, they struggle to make like strong villains in the series so it's yeah. a good point so yeah like, but but i think though this this season though i don't think they really need like that kind of villain just because like how they're going how are they're going about it where they're basically trying to get like like monsters like connected with humans and obviously like basically you know humans aren't having any of that and so it's like it, it just builds that that own tension where like they don't really need like their own like they don't really need a villain for this just because like the you know like all basically all the other familiar are going to be after them besides like besides uh, uh besides Ganesha's uh, familia mm-hmm. but they just got fucking destroyed by like, that giant minotaur oh dude that minotaur is so <laughs> strong dude holy shit um yeah I I well I was, okay well one thing I hated is that the guy with the spear ran away again <laughs> I, I'm I'm just getting so tired of these an- like these animes that are basically doing it I'll talk more about it like later with Fire Force but it's uh. <laughs> But it, like when that happened, I'm thinking, "Oh my fucking god, dude, this guy running away!" But now I, I don't know if the Minotaur is going to show up like on the surface, or if the Minotaur is just going to chase the guy with the spear. To, like, or you I, think he's going to show up? Oh, uh? well, I don't know. Like, if he like, it feels like we if he runs into the guy with the spear. Like, like it sounds like it's going to be like one side battle. I don't know. Uh, no, I'd say it'd be fairly even, right? Because. Uh... I think all of wasn't he like already he's weakened now because he had to undo the curse and like he's already taking well, he's back doing though. It. Well, not 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 that, but the fact that the Minotaur he was able to take down all of Ganesha's like uh, children and then like even Ryu didn't really stand a chance against the Minotaur. I'd say the Minotaur is at least level five like in strength wise. Um, and then with the fact that uh, Dix is having issues too, like you know he used a curse, he's weakened. Uh, apparently he he had to release his curse to get his like. Uh, that's back so like that hit from bell wouldn't kill him so he's he's fairly wounded but i'm sure he has like potions or something on the side to heal himself up so i think if they were to meet it'll be pretty fair a fair mm-hmm. fight dude fells man with like the epic like the basically the op healing abilities too yeah <laughs> um it's uh i don't know brian i guess like you're kind of like that so like really everything that's happening dude, i'm just hyped for the minotaur to show up i'm just bust people's heads open somewhere yeah i, I was, feel oh, like this man legit ran through and blasted that shit to the train i was like holy shit. dude the, the, when i saw her i'm thinking about damn i, I mean i like me and ku know her from like the mobile games pretty well mm-hmm. i thought like god damn dude, this chick is gonna die right here and now um dude the animation they, they actually stepped it up this episode too i thought it was actually really well <laughs> yeah. done just everything they did like what well, bell's punch was epic um and just like just like certain like motions as well where you had no clue what was happening because when that one girl went flying, I already forgot her name, Ku. Um, Shakti? Gan- Ganesh, yeah. Uh, Shakti, when she basically got drilled, I thought it was first, like, the bunny riding the wolf. I was like, holy fuck, that's an epic damn bunny. I too. Like, I was like, wait, did the bunny do this? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was like, I was like, damn, dude, they got, they got, they got like, epic people. And then you find out that it was, I assume, just, like, the Minotaur is, like, I don't know if it's, like, a strike or just, like, just, like, the motion of the strike that hit her. Yeah. 
it's uh but I don't know. I'm af- I'm afraid though with the Minotaur. Like if he goes to the, I-, I feel like if he goes to like the surface, I think he's dead. But if he goes after the, if he goes after the spirit, the spirit dude, I actually hope that he, like the like the monsters actually just destroy this dude and just make sure they tor- they torture him. Mm-hmm. Um, I-, I-, I could easily see the Minotaur go that way because they already have the uh, the red guy and then like the gargoyle dragon chasing him. I s- I think the gargoyle dragon's dead regardless. But I think the, I think the red lizard will survive. Yeah, he's just like a basic looking thing. Like there's nothing really special with them. I and I just assume like his dying breath is like, oh man, they were they were nice humans, and like, then just dead. Even of like how serious this show has gotten, I can't really see like the, the monsters dying. Actually, actually, well, they actually, kill off a few, quite a few monsters already. Off, I guess. Yeah. I guess these seems too important to kill off, <laughs> so I can't really see it. But I, I shouldn't be surprised yeah. if it does happen. Yeah, there's I don't know. There's so many things that could happen this episode. Basically, like eyes versus bell. Um, like the monsters coming into and basically starting off with so, like something with that as well. Haruhime is there, so she could just beef somebody up yeah, too. Like, um, I don't know. Dude. Like it's I I I have no do I, I have no clue what's gonna happen right here. Like it's it's just tough to kind of uh, um, even take kind of like a guess just because of like the steps that they've already taken from previous episodes where we've mm-hmm. saw like them wipe out an entire like room with like the monsters. And they're just like they're definitely not like really holding back on these kind of like no name characters, like not really no name, but kind of like newer characters, I guess. But I don't know. Hmm. I think it's definitely like a way different tone, and I'm also really glad, kind of like going back with what what Ku said. They're taking their time. They're not just like filling like five arcs in the twelve episodes. And not right. just randomly showing uh, our Archer, Arch- Archer girl. For yeah, or the, or, <laughs> yeah, then or the they show, like, they show like the God of War. They show God of War like one episode, then like ah, we're done. Right. It's just it's just dumb. So I'm actually really really glad because I, I mean I'm sure like the second season like those arcs would have been good if we got the whole story. JC staff, but we man. did not. Yeah, I know. I, still, I don't know. Like, well, JC staff. Is... I still can't help but feel like there might even still be more things that like JC staff cut from season three. Well, I'm sure. I'm I'm sure they've cut like stuff it, out. It's in them to do it, even from yeah. how good the season is. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. It's definitely like uh, I don't know. It's getting up there to be like like my favorites like like my favorite season of the three so far like this hmm. one just seems so solid like it's just like the, this just kind of like the story and just like the the tone and everything they're doing is actually feels like it really matters yeah well i, I think people yeah i'm pretty sure i heard it like people say it's like probably like one of the strongest arcs in the light novel oh god so it's gonna go downhill from here <laughs> I, don't okay. downhill, but like... I mean yeah <clears throat> i mean i guess we'll see right because we have to we have to see how how this whole situation resolves yeah, and I think that's kind of like the most important thing. Like as of right now, everything being displayed, or like how the story is written out, I think I think it's really well written for Don Machi standards. Yeah. But if you do something stupid, where at the end, like like they just do like a cop out ending or whatever, <laughs> like like that, they, that sucks. Because they with, cannot. With this, like yeah, I'll just ask they like the actual consequences this season. Yeah. So that that makes. It more I'll just say like like I feel like after this arc, they basically have to like start addressing the main the main i don't know i don't know what the main like the main villain or the main like issue is in this series like what's the whole point like are they just gonna like make the gods go back and like have like everyone just like stay out of everyone's business or what like i, I still don't understand like the main because it just started off as, as a regular like rpg like rpg series mm-hmm. which is raiding dun raiding the dungeon so i don't really know like, what like what the main like yeah what the main problem is in this world like so after this yeah. arc they have to like explain like what's the main goal whoever like made like the dungeon or why the gods are like are in their world well they're kind of giving i guess like some hints like of uh basically who at least didn't make the dungeon but made like that's those secret tunnels uh i mean the the dude that went mad i guess it's still the most important part and like they still need to explain yeah Yeah. what is the point of all this like yeah so that's so that they have to address that like after this arc otherwise like it's just gonna be it's gonna be downhill, right? Yeah, that's that's true. Um, do you guys think like the monsters are gonna be like a big? Oh, sorry, Brian, we're gonna say something. No. Okay, I saw like the mic move, so I was like, all right. Um, uh, do you guys think like the monsters are gonna be like a main kind of like, part of like the? Do you think? I guess like, do you think the monsters are gonna be a main part of like the the story moving forward? And do you think it's gonna be resolved like this arc at the at the end of this season? I I want them to be. Um... Like, I want to be important. I want like, uh, like, like the the city to rec- to um to see the, the, all the Xenos. 
and like see like like even if you don't like even if you don't like them like they know that they exist and you have to like like resolve it i don't want them mm-hmm. i don't want the season to end with like just the xenos just like living in the underground in the dungeon and like only like only a certain amount of familias like knowing who they are like so i get that but, so i'm hoping like like that everyone knows about xenos but i could see them like not i could see them just being like just just like a hit another hidden group so do you, do we think vina's gonna do we think vina's gonna die i think she'll live okay i can't really see how uh, they're pulling it off that she'll die so i don't know man if it's if it's if it's bell versus eyes i don't know if, uh, how much how good of a shot that is i feel like she's gonna die she has to be the catalyst that unites humans and monsters i don't know there could be a lot of other monsters too who knows um, but I, they're I, they're I, not really important to Bell and is because at, at at the end of the day, as what David was talking about, the, the point of the show is about this kid who wants to be a hero, right? And then like the first season was like a kid who's slowly trying to like build his name. Second season, we just won't talk about it. But uh <laughs> with this season, it's more of the fact that you know not everything's gonna go your way. It's not gonna be like an easy journey. There's gonna be like bumps on like on the road, you know. Um uh, and this is him like growing up in a sense, maturing. And for him to be a hero, he has to do something that makes it worthwhile. He already has a power, but as of right now, he has yet to sacrifice or kind of like come to terms with himself. And I think uh, by him being unable to like protect Wiene or like revert her back to her original form, I think that would be a perfect catalyst for him to like grow as a as a person to be a hero. So well, I mean, he already chose his side now. He basically he chose with the monsters. So I think like the the whole that's why basically everybody's just calling him a fool now. No, well that's true, but we don't know if he's gonna like go through with it. As right now, he's oh he's gonna go through step. with it. No, no, yeah. like he's he's taking that step, but there has like it's it's their move now. And then based on what like uh, Loki's familiar does or how this story plays out, like he may change his mind or he may do something that puts him in a spot where he starts back from square one. In a sense. I feel like we're, like, we're too think... far in the season for him to, to like change his mind. I feel like he ha- has to commit yeah. all his decisions now. But is it gonna work though? You know. So well, we'll, we'll I don't know it'll work. The but I feel like is... he has to commit. Well, the one thing is too, like Bell could be the one person to actually talk eyes, like in some sense, because it seems like eyes, is, like it seems like Bell is like the only person that eyes is like really bothered to speak to. Uh, I like the right. besides, like really even her people in the familia, like she'll talk to them, but it's like one or two words. Right. But yeah. Brian, uh any um I guess any uh anything you What level is Ice? Jeez. Isn't she six? Is she six? Okay. Six, I believe. She's like a level below um uh, the ox guy king or whatever. Yeah, well Otara, well I think she was she was originally five I thought she was five, but then she I thought she leveled up to six. Or was it the or am I take or is it four to five and five no, I think she was I five, and then she leveled up six. I think she was five, six, okay. and then Altaro went from six to seven. Because I remember she was always like one level below Altaro. Okay. What level was the rest of her peeps? Uh, probably like one, four or five. Four or five, I guess. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty strong was, in themselves. I was trying to match up the Taurus against them. I wonder what. Yeah, who knows? I mean, because Haruhime basically boosts somebody to, like up a level, which is just a broken ass ability. <laughs> Yeah. Especially with how low levels like things are, like just to, just expect like you finally like you're the only person level seven, and then you use Haru, Haruhime's ability, you beef them up to eight. Like that, that I would assume they could just take out an entire town. You know? Yeah. But I don't know. I'm uh, I'm definitely excited, but also nervous. What what ha- what's going to happen next episode? Yeah, I think the next two episodes is going to set the pace for the well, like the remaining of the episodes. I think. Yeah. But this has definitely been my favorite show this season, which I never would have thought was going to be this show <laughs> I we were, of all the shows. I thought this was going to yeah. be the time where we hear Shred's rant. This, this is bas- this was going to be like my sword art of last, like uh, um, for, for this season, but it ended up not being it. Fire Force is slowly getting there, but we'll talk about that when uh, Sasha, <laughs> Sasha gets here. Gets back. All right. Oh yeah, lord. So I guess that's a bit for Damachi. Um, yeah, and we'll, I guess we'll just wait for um for Sasha to get on for Fire Force. So. Um, I guess we can move on to Standing on a Million Lives if Strand and Koo wants to talk about that for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, this sure. is actually a little bit better too, actually. It is. <laughs> so that's nice. It's the one uh it's the one show that we can hold we can basically like it'll it'll keep us entertained until Lock Rising kicks in next next season. 
yeah, like in terms of Isekai standards, it's it's doing pretty well. I'd say it's above average at this point. I'd say. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot more character development with this episode, and then like I didn't think she would ever lose, but then the the knight, the the female knight that was with them, she actually lost the fight, and like somehow they were able to save her. Like this girl got stabbed, and she was like in the water for like a good period of time, <laughs> and somehow like she's not dead. So I don't know how they did it, but I mean that's that's an anime for you. It happens. It happens. Yeah, one it's like they never went over like how that one guy just died. Uh, they're just like, oh, they were just, they basically just showed, like, them crying over him. Yeah. But they didn't actually show, like, what happened. Uh, I would assume probably some sort of trap or something happened. Yeah, a trap or a monster, I suppose. I don't really know. Or did something happen at the end of last episode? Because I thought maybe they, some, no, 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 never mind. Wow. They walked in with that, uh, with the, the gargoyle. Yeah. It's, a uh, dude, that's some, that's, like, some bullshit, too, where it's just, like, whatever stats you have in the game, you have in real life. And basically, it tanked her ability to play tennis. And she got kicked from the team. I'm just like, holy shit, that's some bullshit. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck, dude? Jesus. Oh, God. I, I don't know. Like, like the rules of this world are still not explained that well, so you don't really know how it works. You kind of just get, like, getting pieces as you go, right? Yeah. And, it's... like, oh, that sucks so much, dude. But she's a warrior now, so maybe it'll, like, bump up that uh, that stat of hers. Oh, yeah. But she's already been removed from the team, so I think the tennis dream is dead. But it, it's But the whole thing is, like, they actually have somebody that can fight. Because they have a... She was a warrior. Was she a warrior? Or was it something else? Just warrior. Okay. So then what is that other girl with the sword? Is she a warrior as well? Yep. She's okay. She's just not doing it. Okay. Got it. So, yeah. They have someone that's, like, able to fight now. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but no, like that, like, that whole thing I thought was actually, like, uh, was done really well and interesting. And also, like, the whole thing where they were... And I also kind of like how they're trying to figure out, like, the mission as well. Like they weren't mm-hmm. actually told of like what the ha- like what specifically they were supposed to do. So mm-hmm. now they're trying to like they're trying to like think about like oh shit like is this even like the right thing? And they're right. kind of going like kind of pretty deep with that. Uh, so I thought that was like oh that's also like uh, I thought that was really well done as well. Yeah, but so it's not but... just a like a brain dead plot like we thought it would be for the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice, but but is it too late though? Do you think it's it's like what episode five six? I, I mean, I've actually liked every episode so far that I've watched. Like yeah. I've not, I don't think I've really hated any episode so far in this show. Um, uh, like every episode, yeah. I'm kind of like getting more into it. Like, it, I mean, I, like I kind of hate. Well, I also thought it was kind of weird too. Like, uh, um, I didn't. I, I guess I kind of got confused. Like when the whole thing when they get a, when they get a, they get a job. I thought they lost the previous job, but apparently they keep it. Oh no no yeah they they both had it. You just, okay. It's like another like additional class, so okay. you get like more more bonus stats. Yeah. I kept thinking, like, why would that chick go back to being a mage, though? And, like, her default look, she went back to mage. I'm thinking, like, like there's no way in hell she would just decide to do mage. Like, she would probably just rock warrior, like, the whole time. Because that just seems like her personality and just, like, her type of um, character. Well, technically, it is still her stronger class because that's rank 10 and her warrior class is rank 1 now. Mm-hmm. Because when you change another class, that class is uh, starts at level 1. And then you have to slowly rank it up. And then when you hit oh. 10 again, you get another class. So it looks like it's a never-ending cycle. So, like, rank 10 is, like, the max rank level, then? I don't think it's max, but it's when you're eligible for a next, for, like, a, a job change, I guess. Hmm. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah. I also like how, too, like, where apparently she can wear, like, a mage hat. She can pull out, a, like, basically like, a bunch of random stuff and just have it equipped. Hey, I mean, if, if it works, it works, right? So... But why didn't she put a hat? Oh, I suppose the bats. It's just the bats or... Bat. Maybe she can get a helmet. I don't know. Like they didn't really showcase what equipment yeah. you got. Right? It was so quick. Yeah. Yeah. So I like I how I like how like that one bat made her level up. Talk about clutch. I mean, I knew something <laughs> was gonna happen, right? It's like, oh boy, they're fucked now. Like, yeah. I don't think that guy is like that close. And then like, oh yeah, step on a bat, everything slowed down. Okay, all right, I see where this is going. And then yeah. like she she just happened to know it was gonna be the warrior class when she like rushed in. So yeah. Hey, that's you got to take advantage. You just got to roll the dice. Yeah, you don't plot armor. To the rest of their team, just seems like they just seem so bad. <laughs> I mean, from the looks of it, though, like it, uh, with every job change, it makes them a lot more useful. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it kind of reminds me of Digimon in a sense, right? Like everyone's kind of useless at the beginning, and then like as the show goes on, each other character, like they're able to like digivolve or like change their class, and it makes them a lot more versatile or actually useful, like in, yeah. in the group. So I'm sure the next check to level up will be the warrior, and then after that will be the uh, 
the the, the fire wizard, I guess. Um, yeah. And then when I they change class, I'm sure it'll be very useful. I kind of feel like the fire wizard is going to level up before the warrior check because she's just done nothing. No, no, no. I don't think that's the case anymore because with the last episode or two, she did kind of overcome her fear of like killing things. Yes, I suppose it, that's true, yeah. Right. And she and, is the one that's actually wanting to like like go after these people as well because there was a kid involved and she has like a connection with kids apparently. Yeah, like as of right now, that fire wizard is actually more useless than, than the, uh, the, the 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 warrior. So she reminds me of Megumin. <laughs> yeah, like she reminds me of Megumin, and then one night reminds me of darkness. I was like, now we just gotta find Aqua. Just think of her as like a useless Megumin, because at least Megumin can use explosion. This chick can't do shit but complain. So yeah, we'll, yeah, that's we'll, fair. We'll that's fair. Yeah. But anyway, I got nothing else. I, I'm like, I'm surprisingly enjoying the show still. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, although this season is kind of setting the bar kind of low, so that's yeah, that's okay. Um, next season with um, Black Horizon is just gonna blow us out of the water. I really hope they have like a first episode though, Lava Lava Log Horizon, where it's a recap because that's oh. been so long ago since I've watched that shit. You know what oh, we should do in that trend? What? As a what group, should we do? We rewatch it together. Oh god. Oh, we can. Hands I don't know. Sing Kumbaya, and then oh, you when lost the me Bard there. episode comes, we can sing along. Oh hell no, dude! I'm skipping those episodes. If I rewatch Lock Horizon, I'm skipping those episodes. Dude, come on, it's um, part of the plot, bro. T- Taylor, I actually think of an Isekai. You may like Log Horizon because it, they focus very little on the fights, and it's hell of like basically world building. Uh, yeah, um, I've had it on my list for a while. I've heard it's basically like the best Isekai. Yes, it's Ooh, it's was, it's really uh, good. Best uh, isekai, Nick, but... and best. But, and uh, Nick Nick really likes it as well too. Um, we we basically binge that shit so like in a few days, from first season to to the end of the second season, and that's when I found out I hated bards, <laughs> except except the league bard. But I mean, I, I could always just give it a shot and try to rewatch it though, because like, like because it's it's like really heavy world building. Like there's so much I forgot about that show, like anything about it. Um, so I, I, Taylor, I can always just tell you kind of like more about the show like off off camera. Or off sure. of uh, the podcast. Sure. And to see if you have any interest, but yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, I'm definitely yeah. a little hyped for that show. Yeah, but yeah, I'm good. All right, so yeah. that's gonna be it for standing on a million lives. And then I guess we move on next to Ikibukuro Westgate. Yes. Yeah, so finally, we're getting on to the main like <laughs> reason why this show is a, 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 like exists, right? Uh, so there's finally some gang wars going on, and it. And apparently, it might be like an internal conflict that they're having. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I don't know why I like it so much. It's nothing like amazing, right? It's something that's like, like wow, <laughs> like this this plot is is so crazy good. It's just you're finally getting what you want, so I'm a little happy. But I, I don't know what's what's your take on this episode so far, Taylor? So I have a slightly different take. <laughs> <laughs> it took me like three different tries to finish this episode. <laughs> Although what? I don't really, yeah, I don't, it's not even that it was bad. I mean, really, it was just more like, it was just a change of pace that I needed to get used to. But I mean, I could get on board as long, like, it felt to me like it came out of nowhere. Um, like, everybody was, like, dancing together and joking around. Everybody got along just fine. And then all of a sudden, there's all this deep-seated tension, it feels like. Right. And it just feels a little forced to me. Like, there needs to be something to instigate it. And there currently is nothing. Um, other than obviously Shadow being hired, but we don't know why. However, right. I will say this: there were some creepy moments in the episode where I was like, "Oh damn, how dark is this going to get?" I mean, because it started out with them like beating up those groups, and those seemed a little bit darker to me. Any kill like people in creepy animal masks are, you know, scary. But then, like when what's what's the main guy's name starts with an M? Makoto. 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 Yeah. He, when he was walking down that alley and he saw the feet behind him just coming yeah. out of the shadows and the feet in front of him just coming out of the shadows, I liked that part. I thought that was pretty well done, actually. I didn't really get that part. To be honest, that was the part that confused me the most because this is what? supposed to be like, isn't Makoto kind of like a badass? Why would that scare him? This is a guy who was like <laughs> friends with a, with a gang leader. If that doesn't scare you, <laughs> like you don't have like a, a, a heart or something, like... No, no, no. Like, if, if that was IRL, right? And that was uh-huh. me, if if for some dumb reason I was walking down the alleyway with only, like, two or three spotlights, like, every, like, so many meters. Okay, yeah, yeah sure, I'd be scared, too, if I can't see the guy. But this is, like, Makoto we're talking about. 
this guy was willing to do other things that was just as dangerous, and he wasn't phased. But all of a sudden, like this one guy following him is is going to scare the shit out of him. Like, I think there's a difference in what it's, it's out of character. It all I gotta not. say, it's out of character. <laughs> It's not out of character because he knows that those other gangs, like the, the other people that were also strong and not scared of a lot of things, had gotten the total crap beat out of them. And he, they were like with other people. They weren't alone. He was alone and he was being flanked on each side and he couldn't see who they were and not being able to see what you're up against automatically raises your fear. Let me tell you what, that scene reminded me of Silent Hills, you know, the 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 demo game. Did you ever play that? Which one? Silent Hill one, two, three. No, no Silent Hills. The the He's last one was PT. supposed to come out before. Sorry, PT. Yeah. Um, uh, I played the classic ones on PlayStation, but okay. Not the well, it was different than Coup. Yeah. No, never mind. Then, if you haven't played it, you won't know the reference that I'm making. But it reminded me straight of like a scene right out of that game, and it immediately had my hackles up. And I, 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 th- I could totally buy that he'd be scared. I think he'd be scared too. I mean, it feels like a normal guy, sure, but this is Makoto we're talking about. This is the guy who eats fruit on his ramen. He's like super cool, <laughs> confident, you know. Like is that I don't the expect. Part of my wish we're measure- measuring bravery now. I guess so. I mean, that's ramen. that's braver than me. I wouldn't do that shit, you know. But uh, yeah, no, like I said, maybe I just had this like weird uh, like idea about Makoto, like just the fact that he's super strong and he really has something to worry about. Mm-hmm. Um. Or like more like this is his city, so I don't see why he would feel that threatened. Even if this the shadow guy is now on scene, mm-hmm. I mean he he's more than capable of handling himself. So I thought that was out of well. Care. That aside, though, I mean I still feel like um, I still feel like it was a good introduction to a new group. Um, I thought they felt appropriately sinister, and I want to know why they were hired. Mm-hmm. And the the thing that felt out of character for me was the blonde guy that like picking a fight with um king now like because i thought they were very close to each other and and oh you mean knights or whatever i thought his name was king no. the leader of takashi i think his name is takashi Ma- Matoko yeah yeah, yeah. Takashi. oh okay yeah, yeah 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 and i thought that him and takashi were like close like i thought he was one of his top officers of this gang uh-huh. And um and so then when I found out that actually there is all this tension, it just felt kind of forced and out of character to me. That part did, but like uh-huh. I mean, it might just be that we don't even have enough information to work with yet. So yeah, they never really went off with the structure. Like I didn't know those different factions within the G Boys. I thought if you're in yeah. the G Boys, you're part of the G Boys. But apparently they so just too. they're kind of like a big corporation that's just taken over all their smaller factions and bringing them into mm-hmm. the G Boys. So I think that's mm-hmm. what it is. And then the guy that he's having issues with. Uh, knight or whatever. I think he's probably the guy that hired Shadow, and he's just getting so? it. I feel like he is, just because he kind of wants the power that that King has, you know. Yeah. And then you can kind of tell from like how Takashi or me, even Makoto's talking about it, like he's just like he, he's given this vibe that he just wants to take the lead because he's not liking the way that Takashi uh, is handling things. You know, he thinks that he's too soft. That uh, you know, if Knight was in charge, they could get more accomplished. And then even with that scene where he met Makoto the first time and he went down and saw his like underlings, they're talking about how like we're we're fighters, you know, we're ready to go do the next mission, whatever. So I can kind of see where the tension is coming from. And I think that's you know, how it all of this. I think that yeah, I just didn't I like I was going a different way with it. Like I really thought that that guy I mean, I think that he was giving off that air because he was talking about wanting to defend his own gang. Mm -hmm. and he would do that pretty ruthlessly and i feel like that's where that tension came from right but in terms of who actually hired shadow if it's not the blonde guy and if it's not the um what uh knight then i actually kind of think it might be one of knight's people like his right hand man the super friendly one the almost too friendly one the one that's voiced by honey and uh, i feel like it's him because it feels too obvious to be knight you know, doesn't uh, it? Or no? No, I I feel like huh. I I feel like he would be a like possible candidate. Uh, well, but then again, we don't really know much about the guy. No, we really don't, because I like I don't really remember him talking about very much at all, or like right. him insinuating that Takashi 
is too soft. I don't remember the conversation happening where it seemed like he felt that way. It was just this episode. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, well, and then like at the end, they did do like a still shot of the the, the Red Angels guy, the the dancer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Maybe they're insinuating something that maybe he was the guy that started all this, uh, this stuff. But uh, I guess it's all just speculation at this point. Yeah, they didn't give us the the background yet, and that's fine. I thought I thought it was still a, a good episode. I, again, it took me like three times to finish it just because it was such a. This <laughs> finally switched gears into probably what it was meant to be, <laughs> but um, but I liked it. Like now that we're talking about it, I'm excited about it. I like this show. I can't tell you why, just like you said, but I do like it. Yeah, I mean, well, it's not bad. I mean, they had this tension from the get go, from episode one, but then after episode yeah. one, they kind of just went off with whatever, like the random cases that he was getting. And at least the yeah, uh, the Chinese true. girl alive. So. Yeah, so that's true. That. I'm glad right. she's around. <laughs> For now. For now. Stop. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's it. That's all I had for uh, Ikeb and Bukuro. So. Yeah, same. Hello. Right, so I guess that's going to be it for Ikeb Bukuro, Westgate. And then um, if Taylor Reese, you just want to talk a little bit about Moriarty. Uh, yeah. So this week, let me just rewind in my head. <laughs> Um, this week was pretty good. It was another one where it was about, um, just like a new character that was introduced in this episode. It was another sad episode. I mean, I, I, I think probably they're all going to have some element of sadness because it's basically just like a new plot each episode where Moriarty fixes, um, a person who's lower in class, some egregious deed that's been done against them by an aristocrat and he'll go after an attack. What a surprise. Yep, um, but this one I thought was a little bit more realistic. It wasn't quite so um, cartoony like it has been the last couple. Um, and they also introduced two new characters. Looks like um, companions that Moriarty has worked with before. And still no Sherlock around. And that's really it. It didn't progress anything forward. It was just like an episode of the week kind of thing. But it was a good one. I still really like this show a lot. It would be my third top show of the season. It looks interesting. I just, I'm not caught up to it. So I'll probably watch it like after the season or something. I actually think it wouldn't be a bad one to binge when you have time. You know? Yeah. But yeah, that's all I have for it. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that's a bit for more already. Um, and then do we just want to jump straight to Fire Force as our last show? Uh, well, are yeah, we going to we'll talk about Juju? Oh, never mind. I'm losing my mind. Go ahead. Oh geez, that old age is coming. <laughs> okay, yeah. So do you want do you guys want to just want to hop into Fire Force for our last show? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yep. Um, I don't know. So, I guess, like going into this episode, I guess it the setup was pretty cool because we had you know we had Company Eight joining forces of Company Two. We we had like a mission going into this, going into another. So like the setup was really cool and like some of the fights were cool but like it was the, the the tone was like all over the place this episode like I I really did not like a lot of things that happened in this episode and like yeah I actually no, only they, laughed another part they they killed my favorite dude the the new guy <laughs> the new the... guy just dies in this episode right away like, again yeah oh was, my god okay that was so badly placed like you go from basically like all these con- okay. <laughs> Okay, wow. so when they just randomly showed those people that they when they randomly showed those people like you know just showed up, I just started laughing immediately because I immediately thought like okay all these people mean nothing and they're all gonna die and like one by one they just kept dying and then the guy's like oh man I just want to get back to my shoes I-, I was just dying laughing even though this guy like just got well, I think he just got shot I don't remember exactly what happened he got him. stabbed but like, oh, he got stabbed he got stabbed okay were well, you laughing yeah, you, the, you the, were the laughing because it was generally <laughs> funny you were just laughing how bad the setup was right yes okay. uh, we gotta make the, we gotta make so the distinction. Yeah, and then uh, the the one thing that kind of surprised, like, because it's like again, like, why are you wasting time, kind of like on these like random people's backstories? I was like, also their names. I thought for some reason it was hilarious. I don't know why. why? Uh, Anton and Jonas, man. Oh, dude, I don't know. <laughs> I fucking don't know, dude. Uh, it was just, I don't know, man. It was just, uh, man, it was like, bad. man. I remember it those guys' bad. name. I can't remember the, the, the badass guy. <laughs> I think yeah, like no. he, he, he something or has something. I think something H. I can't remember his name. He was the most badass one. The only Sasha was yeah. here, and he gets to start 
start ranting for all of us. Yeah, I, well, again, we'll like, I can't. Reese. Yeah, kind of, like, again, though, just like on that, like that moment, like when that guy's head just got lopped off, I left again just because, like, just the weird shit that was, like, set up. Like, and I was like, oh shit, this guy's actually did. <laughs> and then it was, so it was just, it was a very poorly placed uh, uh, spot I didn't again. Laugh. I was just more like, I was just like, Ugh, not again, that kind of feeling. Like, Dude, really? They, ugh, they, they have to get rid of Tamaki or whatever the hell her name is. Yeah, like, she's. She's by far the worst fucking thing like, in what the did, show. What does she have that ability? High like Resistance. thermal protection? Yeah, I don't remember Resistance that at whatever? all. Yeah, it's basically like, again, like this chick is making no progress whatsoever. It's again, she just gets beat to shit and she has to have somebody save her again. And they, they, I think this is what, the third time now? Second, uh, third time? Something like that? The second time where she's almost, she almost died. Yeah, it's just like, it, it's getting to the point now like where it's just like, the, the chick just needs to go. Like, you, it's you, just, just, you always need a damsel in distress, okay? Not when you're trying to set it up like to make it seem like she's going to make progress. Brian, it's 2020. No she that's, did that's, that's at the beginning anymore. of the season. Mm-hmm. Bro, that's, that's 2019, 2018, all right? That's not 2020. <laughs> it's a new generation, all right? It's a new, oh, yeah, it's a new it's generation. A, new year. a whole it's generation, yeah. It's a, it's a new time, right? <laughs> I feel like the only reason she was in there just, was just to chip with Shinra, but they haven't even done anything with that. So yeah, it's even more useless. With her I honestly can't tell. I can't it's tell what, who she's in ship with. I just it's I feel like, like, right now. I feel like but, it's like the, yeah. that's the whole reason why she was in here in the first place. And but they didn't even do anything with that. Yeah. Yeah, so, like yeah. it's just terrible. Like again, like you start off the you start the episode with basically going like that stupid, just stupid, pointless shit that was just happening like mm-hmm. nonstop, like, and then you proceed to kill random people. Like the whole Tanaki thing, like it's 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 something it's it's something that we're already it's a problem that we consistently had, so I'm not surprised. But it's like the whole like backstory thing and try to make a joke out of it. It's like, dude, this is not the time and place for this. Like, yeah. like again, like the the author like is struggling with a comedy, man. Like, like he just at this point he just has to he just has to cut it out, dude. See, like that's why like he's the retiring. comedy. This is why he's retiring, man. He, yeah, it's I guess or he needs but, to get um, shown in or I don't know, like. Not showing him, but like, just. Or he's... maybe just a better editor, you know? Yeah. Because like that. some of the stuff he puts, some of the stuff he has is pretty nice. Like the beginning with Arthur, like the fact that he got a man, like the squad that he joined had a manual to how to deal with Arthur. I thought that was fucking hilarious, <laughs> dude. That was good. See, yeah. see, all yeah. things of Arthur is pretty funny, but it's like, it's just not, not all of them. It's, it's not the most of them. consistent. So it's like, right. and you're right about the, yeah. the editor. Like again, like a lot of these, like, because these these are manga, so it's like a lot of these. A lot of these things that we can play them out, it passed by an editor, so I don't know. It's just like I'm. I'm also actually getting tired with uh, tired about Juggernaut. Like I, I <laughs> like it's, I'm so tired of his like suit. How like when did his suit regenerate? Like was that always I, a thing? I think I think it's like <sighs> I don't know. It's like he tries to play up as a gag, but then like it's being used seriously in a fight, which doesn't like it doesn't make sense with like yeah like, like with his power i don't know what the hell his power is and if you think about so, it like when they showcase his real body he, i thought he was just some midget right some midget i like, like, like super skinny his... like lanky guy but he was like normal yeah he's like a normal pretty tall bulky guy so, so i was really confused as to so, like, the, how he's surviving these hits the gag is supposed to be like he's wearing a lot of layers but it's like he's regenerating his clothes so it's like again it's not being consistent like and it's not and because of that like there's no consequences to what happens to juggernaut because the author can't be consistent. No, but that changed yeah. today. This guy is dead for sure, right? He just launched a uh, a nuclear bomb in a sense. I, I feel like, dude, they already killed off a no name guy. I don't think they're gonna kill him off too. No, because if if you if you want that ship to happen with uh, Shinra and Tamaki, like the, he's got to die. I mean, I don't think that ship's gonna happen. I, 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 mean, I would just assume it was, I, I thought, uh, the other blonde girl. I I was saying like that was the initial like the initial reason why she's there, but like the author hasn't done anything with it. And also, this is also the same arc where. Uh, Maki's brother got like the suicide bomber still survives so I, mm-hmm. yeah again, I like he's back already and he's, like, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's up and running from a suicide bomb he just was just like uh, you know just like I forgot what the thing is on his arm the sling sling yes yeah, a sling like he's just he just has a sling from a fucking suicide bomber attack so well he still has his broken ribs too I mean I, I don't think we jumped that high like that far into time so yeah. So again, consistency in this show. Yeah, that's pretty oh, bad. It's uh like well, Juggernaut. I think he's like tall and lanky. I I mean I, I just don't I don't think he's gonna I don't think he's gonna be dead from there. I think they already had a few deaths that were just kind of like random. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm 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 just I'm sick and tired of basically like this like this like this catch and run shit. Like it's just it's just uh, I, I mean. 
nothing really happened this episode yet, but I just feel like this is almost meaningless in a sense where I just feel like nothing's going to fucking happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, that's just like my mindset in the show now. Like just nothing really matters. Like big matters. Like even those people that died, it didn't fucking matter. We didn't well, know any of them because like the author tried to make, well, that was obvious. He, he tried to make a comedy. That's why. Yeah. Know, again, like struggling, like a consistency. Yeah. When I, when I saw the, when I saw the first flashback or whatever, I was like, Oh shit, is he really going to set up this death flag? Oh, there it is. I, like, <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. And then they did it again and again. And then he did a for shoe. I was like, you know, that the shoe was kind of funny, but uh, he still died oh, anyways. Like, I just, yeah, <laughs> that was like, I was like, what? Because because it was like the like it was funny because it came out of nowhere, right? You were expecting him to have like yeah. a serious one too, but then like the shoe kind of made it a little bit funnier. But yeah, it was kind of like no, like he overplayed that joke. Like, yeah, I, I I I was like when he did like the backstory and then he died right away. I was like, like I just did not see. I just did not like it at all. Like I just saw it more as like. This author not understanding how to consistently place like, it's like the that uh, moments. So it's like that sort of moment where they had like that epic moment with some person we've never heard of before in our lives. Like she, they showed like a five second flashback, and like and then like and then a uh, um, Reddit was just losing their shit. They thought it was like it was so cool. I'm thinking this is fucking pointless. Like it was basically they were just like throwing money away just to throw money or just to yeah. burn it. And, um, so like, uh, yeah. Brian, is this show trending up upwards or downwards for you? As we speak, <laughs> Fire Force. Uh, yes. At this point, it's going a little bit down. Not gonna lie. A little bit only. Yeah, just a little bit. You know. Yes. Uh, I guess. Uh, the one- dude, it's just like after the dude after the Ogun episode is just like real <laughs> shit. Well, I mean, not with that, it's like after. Yeah, after that and after, after they pretty much went to China, I was like, dude. Well and uh ah. well Joker and um <laughs> Joker and uh and yeah. Benny, Mar- Benny Mario was like the last dude, was, like the last those like, two? Part. Oh my god, yeah. After that it was just whatever. So it's Everything like, had, in between those is just nothing. So like you had to be yeah. at the plot revelation of like, you know, Amaterasu is being powered by one by a person and then and then you had the badass like more backstory of like Joker, but then like it's it's like you said during the the, the run in like the just the running away and like yeah it's oh my god just, like we should be we should be like building an, an army basically to to fight against like this underground cult or this cult group but it's everything's so scattered well it's like at least one of them have to die and also at, at the same time i feel like this whole like under like the under basically like the like the the nether world nether realm just mm-hmm. it's pointless like it just feels like it's another like pointless thing it's like you were just going like how brett david you mentioned like the amaterasu and they're just running around like trying to find like more info. It's like you fucking know already. Like why? Like why are we going back here? Uh, and Sasha, you joined us perfect, at a perfect time. We're in. We're we are currently in Spider Force. The floor is all yours, sir. I think we yes. said like everything. We said all our complaints. Yeah, we uh, stuff, so we, we uh, a bunch. So it's all yours. Yes. Uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll ca- we'll catch up. We'll, we'll let you know uh, anything we mentioned and if we agree upon it. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So comedy complete miss. Um, yeah. We got that I th- too. I thought, except Arthur, except Ar- like Arthur's part, I thought was good. That was like one part though. So, but anyway, uh, after that though, terrible. Yeah, the fair, episode, fair. The overall episode. Um, yeah. I thought Thermal Eyes guy had a lot of potential, and then they killed him off. Yep. <laughs> and he couldn't sense the KKK. That part made no sense to me, honestly. Like his whole power is based upon his ability to see flames and sense thermal energy. And yet, this like little whip kills him out of nowhere. It just, it didn't fit his character. If it was anybody else, if it was that like weird guy who headbutts people, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> but it's the guy who who's supposed to see these things through walls. So I don't know what the deal was there. Uh, I really liked his character actually, but they killed him. Um, yep. I th- I think the animation was top notch. Um, this is. It was like a half and half episode. The first half, I was like, oh, okay, we're back in the nether. People are dying randomly. I don't know who this chick is with the whip. Like, they haven't really set her character up, so I don't care about the battle as much. Um, it's just good intentions. I thought it could have been executed better. And the emotions were lacking because they didn't set up this guy's character until this very episode. Like, they threw it all together at once. So, oh, yeah. he wanted to be scared this whole time. Or he didn't want to be scared, but he was. And then, you know, his mom and his lieutenant talked to him, but we just killed him off. And then all these guys have these flashbacks 
about like, oh, my daughter is being born or, oh, you know, my, my sneaker, I'm going to wear that tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, okay, but I'm, I'm telling you, like, I get what they're going for. It's just like the execution. I think it's because of all the baggage that's come with season two. You're like, really? Like, so the whole point of se- these guys was not to help you out and show your powers, but to show the enemy's powers and have them just kind of die. It was like the putties in Power Rangers. You guys remember those? The <laughs> great things? Like, <laughs> yeah. So good times. Yeah. Um, definitely better than like the last four episodes combined, but uh, it's just, it's, it, it's, it's a shame that fire force has gone this long in season two I without like having to. Yeah. Especially with like Joker and what's the eye patch guy's mm-hmm. name? Benimaru. Yeah, there's Benny Maru, and then I forgot the eye patch um, guy. The, Captain Burns. Captain Burns, thank you. So it, it was good. Like I would definitely say this episode has more replayability and value than the previous five, six, like I said, combined, but it's it's just something about it was missing. And I think it was the lack of development and the rush job and just the sense of, okay, what are you trying to do? Like that's my problem with Fire Force, is it's too much at once. Like pick which direction you're going to go in. And that's what I loved about the Joker episode was it was just serious from, from the beginning to the end. There was no real humor in it besides that one quick joke about Benny Maru. And that was well done because it was subtle. To like the, the stuff they have in the recent episodes, it's just all over the place. So I'd say I'd count this in the good episodes. I feel like it could start a streak. But overall, bro, I'm getting tired of the nether, man. Just get the money. <laughs> I know, <first>. right? <laughs> Fuck, it's like we have like this Amaterasu, we have like all this like steady stuff, and then you're just like, oh, let's just go back here for more information. It's just like, why? And uh, Sasha also, like, uh, do you like also, what did you think of uh, uh, her brother joining them again already after uh, having broken ribs and everything else? Oh man, I was just like, uh, the once again, this is just kind of forced and rushed, right? Like, we just introduced this guy an episode ago, and now he's going into the nether because he's like, you tricked my sister, and I'm like, bro. <laughs> Your sister seems to love being here. She seems happier than ever. What part of that is trickery? And this group is the one that's trying to find out who is um, who is actually shady as hell in the government. And I don't know. It just feels like it, it's just forced. It's very forced. It's yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. We kind of mentioned like with like the whole comedy. Basically, comedy is all over the place. It doesn't know where like where it, where it should be. Like where it should be. I'm also just really sick and tired of Tamaki. Like I just can't stand that character at all anymore. Uh, we mentioned also about how she's really made no progress, how she just keeps getting beat down to just nothing, and then she just has to be held, like, you know, saved. She basically just gets beat down, nothing, loses, like, all of her clothes, and that's, like, what she's for in this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also mentioned, too, like, because when you were, like, when they were showing, like, those random-ass flashba- flashbacks with those those three guys, I forgot their names, but when they when they kept saying their names, I was laughing. But when oh, they were yeah. showing, like, these random flashbacks, like, I just, I just kept laughing through all of them, and I kept laughing through, like, the shoe thing. And then when the guy's head got lopped off, I thought for some like I thought it was a joke, <laughs> or something else was going to happen instead of they just killed him off right there and there. I'm thinking, oh shit! So this is happening. Um, that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You don't know whether the show's being serious, whether it's not, and they've mucked it up. They've like, do we do we know what this guy's actual power is? This guy who can just regrow all his limbs? No, and shrink I know, right? His body? We were just talking about that too. No, like, when the hell could he just regen too. clothing? Yeah, uh, just artillery. I've always thought. Well, What's he that? Has, he has heavy firepower. That's all I remember. So I thought he had stuff to do with artillery. Yeah, but he's also regenerating his, his clothes every single time. And yeah, yeah. his so layers, if you will. Yes. I I don't know. They they've done a poor job explaining his character and just yeah. developing him overall. So it just yeah. Uh, I'm telling you, I really liked Thermal Eyes character, and then just to kill him off like that. And like you mentioned, it's humor. Then it's serious. Then it's humor. That it's like, dude, pick one. And stick with it for at least a full episode, and you have a great show. When yeah. you throw it all together like this, ah, uh, it's it's bad. Yeah, yeah. So, it's uh. I, so, I, mean, I was just saying how this, like, I'm seeing this every week, basically just consistency. Just author just needs to focus. And yeah, well, I, was, I mean, we I was to... just I was just saying, man, this is why he's gonna retire after this manga. He can't make any anything else after this. I was also like, we kind of mentioned like, t- like I'm tired too because it just feels like they just keep chasing people. Like nothing actually happens. No noteworthy character dies. Like be the like uh, like villain, like the villain like side, because mm-hmm. it's just like we keep chasing the same fucking people over and over again. And it feels like we're almost like what forty something. We're we're, in cl- we're closing in on like forty. No, we're over forty something episodes. 
and like their entire side is still there. Like nobody has died, and I, and it's just like we're so f- we it feels like we're so far in this episode episode or this uh, the show, but it just feels like there's like still so much shit that needs to be done, and like just really nothing has happened. Hmm. I don't know. It's uh. I mean, that's the problem with the show in general is, like I said, the lack of consequences on either side. So they kill off characters that are meaningless or that are introduced within the same episode. They don't bother to really hurt or damage any of the other characters, be it the main protagonist or antagonist. It just seems they don't really get a chance to change. Um, so it's it's rough. And, and then, like, you have the story is all over the place, like, we were getting somewhere with raffles and discovering the diary and learning more about Amaterasu. So they show that whole pre-story again, um, right before the episode starts. I skipped it. And then they don't refer to anything related to that. And then, like I said, this villain who has a pretty cool power with her whip that seems to be just lightning fast. All of a sudden we don't really know her either. So there's no tension then there's no reason to root for anybody like i didn't care if that guy died honestly i cared more that that one guy got beheaded than either of those two living (laughs) like i would have rather they suffered and he's like i will do this because i have this power that's actually useful and (laughs) no they they just kill him off so yeah yeah, Yeah. it's uh unfortunate like i said for me if season two ends on the similar note it's a drop it for me because the story is just not progressing enough it's like like you said, what are we waiting for here? Get to the damn point. Yeah. Well, yeah, I should also mention too, like this this whip lady, if she's actually dead after this, that doesn't count because she's had no backstory, nothing. She's just a, she's just a, like a meaningless like character, just to have like these like useless characters have a point, almost. And, and then it's, it's just like so that I don't consider that like like actually meaningful or progressing the story in any way at all. Um, it's only if we if if there's actually like a death like in like the original um, evangelical group. Uh, or evangelist group, where it's a, uh, where it's a, uh, where it's somebody that we we actually know, like they have a backstory where we see them over and over again. They keep running away. Those ones, I I, I mean, not the ones that like the whip check that has no point because it's it's just it just doesn't. Yeah, work. they got to flip the switch, man. Uh, last season it was very focused because it was all about show, and then we reveal his power and he's a badass, yep. and then have that awesome fight, right? You just don't know what's going to happen because they've they're all over the place with this season. And then I'll give you a perfect example of how the show doesn't know what it's doing. Everyone that turned into a zombie, it was like split second deaths, like no time to react whatsoever because they're like, oh, 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 ah, right. Yeah. And then that one guy gets shot in the head, and Victor, who I love, is just staring at him for ten seconds, and the guy just turns around, it's like, ah, and then Victor escapes like Scooby Doo style through yeah. that, just like. <laughs> mirage of bullets and and you're thinking to yourself okay the the past three characters just died within an instant yet victor plot armor escapes like it's nothing and like what if his arm got torn off or what if he got infected and then later on turned infernal but try to give them all the information he knew but before he could he was used by them it's just i really don't like when they take characters and they turn them zombie mode naruto did a horrible job with it 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 really it bugs me. It's kind of like using time travel as a crutch to solve a problem. When the enemy can do that, it also feels like a giant crutch. So I don't like it either. It's just make up your mind and pick a direction to go for these last three episodes, four episodes, whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, I think you will have a good ending. But as it stands, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's a Gotcha. <laughs> I mean, I don't, well, I don't really think I have much more. I think um, we've said I, enough, yeah. Yeah, basically. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, we basically follow like the exact same things that you, as like in the same kind of like, complaints as well that you had, Sasha. But I love, mm-hmm. I love when um, you make it clear and concise. So thanks for that. Yeah, that was no good. problem, guys. That's my um, fire ability. Yes. Right. Hopefully, next episode. Oh, actually, well, Sasha's a, a third generation explainer. <laughs> yes, my grandfather. He passed it on to me. In the bathtubs of Serbia. <laughs> yeah, I, I just hope the next episode has like some sort of like more meaning to it than just like a, just a filler episode I've kinda, or I filler fight. Up, so even though I'm gonna keep watching, I, I I I'm not. I have low expectations going forward. I'm just assuming we're gonna just get some kind of craziness like like the last few episodes of the season again. I'm just assuming they're gonna throw everything there. Yeah, um, I. 
I will say one credit I do give the episode or one piece of credit I do is when um, Tamaki was down and she's like, Shinra, help hero. I was like, dude, if he shows up out of nowhere, yep. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this off right now. And <laughs> thankfully, you know, that guy pulled himself together and it was him. But I was just like, oh, gosh, don't yeah. do not do that show. Don't do yeah. it. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> like, I got nothing else. So I think that's gonna be it for Fire Force, and then that's that's the end of this week's episode. So, well, thank the audience for being with us here today. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Johan. Thank you, Nick. Arigato gozaimasu. Mm-hmm. Arigato gozaimasu. Oh. <laughs> well, thank the panel for being with me. Thanks, guys. Always enjoy having you yeah, with me every no week. No oh. problem. Oof. It was tough talk for this long, guys, but yep, I got <laughs> your back. Oh, also, I <laughs> should mention too because I just mentioned earlier uh, Demon Slayer movie. Um, it's up 200 million now at the box office in Japan. So, it's like, dude, it's like, my body is ready. It's like up there of like one of the top grossing like movies in Japan overall. So, it's really we'll definitely, I'll, uh, we'll definitely all have to watch it at some point, like uh, on a some sort of day, and then be able to just talk about it then on Friday or like on the next winter Friday. Well deserved. Well yeah. deserved. So, yeah, and that's gonna be it for us for this week. So, we'll see you guys later. Bye. 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 Bless your souls. What?